I'm Sarah Lacey. And I'm Paul Carr. And welcome to Too Long Didn't Watch. This week, it is the Russians again. We're doing a story about whether or not a Russian blogger stole a Nokia phone, and which Nokia is saying they did, and the Russians' authority are involved, and he's saying they're not, and we've got the blogger here today to defend himself. It's the Russians' version of the the stolen iPhone. Yep. With a, with a sort of communist twist. Less sexy, but with the KGB. Yeah, it's like the Cold War. <laughs> well, we're joined now by Eldar Mutazan, who's on Skype in Moscow. Eldar, thanks for joining us. Hello. So, in a nutshell, um, there's, there's a missing phone. One of Nokia's children is missing. You are a, <laughs> you, you're holding it hostage. This is what we hear. Um, what's your side of the story? Explain, explain the situation. If, if we are talking about N8, it was uh, just uh, a small part in weekly call, which called Birulki. And after that, Nokia closed all relationship uh, with us, personally with me, do not answer on phone calls, do not answer on emails, etc., etc. And uh, after that, we have a call from the police that Nokia um, trying through the Russian authorities back some property. But they not uh, specified which properties they want back. Well, presumably and, they want their phone back. I mean, do you have do their you phone? Do you have the phone? No, I don't have any phones. I don't have any property from Nokia. I don't have any specific information which was provided by Nokia or other counterparts which working with Nokia because uh, the simple things, the small and big lies here in this case that Nokia insists that I'm working like research consultant for Samsung. Yeah. It's not true. I'm not working as research consultant for Samsung. Uh, another, another kind, another angle of view about this story. Nokia, from official statements, they're saying that they delivered to me official letter in paper, not email, in paper uh, about this issue. I officially could say only one thing. I have never received any letter. Okay, so, okay, so this is, sorry, this is the, um, going, this is back and forth whether you got a letter, whether you didn't. They're arguing that you have their phone. You're saying you don't have their phone. So Nokia are just, mis I mean, have you had it and now you've got rid of it? I mean, did you, did you have in Why your possession? Why do they think you have their phone? Right. I don't know because they're not based on facts. If we're talking about this situation, current situation, uh, one year ago when it was leaked about N900, the first Miami device, uh, I talked with top manager, security top manager from Nokia. I discussed a lot of things with him by phone, by email, even write uh, some essay about informational, informational security in internet. And it, it was made just by free will because I, I want to show how Nokia could protect sources, how could they protect prototypes. I'm not interested in leakage or on leaks in devices on the market. That, that's the problem that one year ago we have discussion about that. Nothing happens. Today Nokia trying to show that um, I'm not journalist. They show me like research consultant, like blogger. But are you a consultant? I know, you, I know you said you don't do consulting work for Samsung, but are you a consultant for the mobile industry or is that completely false? I'm a consultant for mobile industry as, uh, for instance, I consult uh, Nokia as well in the past. If we are talking about current situation, uh, it was um, some project which happens for some years ago and uh, nowadays I'm not working with any direct competitor of Nokia. It's official statement. I'm not working with any competitors with Nokia phones nowadays. Okay, let's just let's just finish up with one question then. Just to, I know I've asked you this, but just to be clear, you don't have Nokia's phone. You've never had Nokia's phone. Nokia are wrong to suggest that you have their phone. So there's no story here. Yeah. We're joined now by Mike Butcher, who is the editor-in-chief of TechCrunch Europe and hopefully can shed some light on this strange situation. Now, Butcher, we, uh, 
<laughs> we just talked to Eldar and he said that he's never had a phone. I mean, this has sort of gone beyond just saying he hasn't done consulting work for the competitor, that he you know, tried to reach out to them, that he's never gotten a letter. He's saying he never had a phone. What's going on with the story? Well, uh, it's absolutely confusing, isn't it? Because uh, Nokia has actually contacted the Russian authorities, and uh, that's quite a big deal in Russia. <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> especially since the policeman walked around with AK-47. We, we've seen films, so, we know what goes on. <laughs> so uh, uh, you, you can imagine um, it's quite a serious issue. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, you may have got this information out of, you out of him yourself, but um, as far as we know, uh, he's actually turning himself in effectively. He's going to go and see the police and talk to them and explain to them, um, uh, and possibly in rubles, um, what <laughs> actually is, is going on. But he's, um, not, he's not turning himself in as in he's admitting guilt. He's, he's going to cooperate. Exactly. He's right. cooperating with the authorities, which is absolutely true and, and right, right, what a journalist what a journalist would do normally, of course. And of course, he turn says themselves he into the, the Russians. <laughs> he doesn't have the, and he says he doesn't have the phone as well. Um, Nokia is sticking to their guns, from what we can gather over here. We talked spoke to their PR people, and they are actually saying, um, you know, basically repeating their previous statement that they're going to, you know, protect their intellectual property. But there's a, there's a wider issue here as well about, you know, you know, what intellectual property has, has Nokia got right now that's it's going to set the world on fire. And recently, yeah, I mean, that's my question. This isn't the iPhone. I mean, who cares about Nokia? Well, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I mean, Sorry, Nokia. Yeah. Yeah, so it's still two-fifths two of, the, of the world's smartphone market. They're selling about 39% of the world's mobile phones in total. So reasonably, reasonably large still. Uh, but the issue here is really for us and certain TechCrunch watchers, as it were, is developers, applications, the next wave of, of, of computing, basically. And Ansi and Van Jokey, or Van Jokey, uh, uh, however you say his name in Finnish, is the new head of mo mobile solutions for Nokia. And he's basically going to be trying to become the kind of Steve Jobs for Nokia, if you will. So he's, yeah, he's, taking a a order. he's taking a leaf out of Steve Jobs' book by sending the authorities around to people's doors. But I mean, Mike, what's your <laughs> sense? You're, you've been working on this story, and I know Robin Waters has been working on it too. What's your guy's sense? Did he have a phone? Is he now just like trying to cover his ass? Is he just panicking? Well, I mean, and also, do you cons as is he the lying? editor of TechCrunch Europe, do you consider him a journalist? He's arguing he's a journalist, not a consultant. Well, this is true, and we have, I've actually quizzed him on this myself as well. Um, but the, the, the issue, he says that he's not a consultant for Samsung. Now, I yeah. didn't ask about Samsung. Now, so he said there is he, he confirmed he is there. a consultant. Yeah, he told us he is a consultant. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, and this is the this is the problem. And I think there there is a grey area here, especially in some blogging communities in Russia, which is still very much sort of slightly hermetically sealed from, uh, say, even. The, large swathes of Europe as well. So the whole Russian scene is very much its own scene. And uh, you know how you operate there, it, it, it's very much it's a, kind of its own thing. So um, that's, a, that's a big issue, and that's, a, that's an issue. But then again, you know, it's the Nokia N8. You know, it's the sequel to the Nokia N7. It's not the next iPhone. Well, that's, that'll be reassuring to him when he's in a communist gulag, <laughs> mining right. salt in Siberia. We'll but have to leave it there, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So I don't know about you, but I'm still completely unclear as to what's going on. It's, it is like the Cold War. The, uh, the Russians say they don't have the phone. Nokia say I they do. I still don't know if Anna's a spy or not, or what she was looking to get. So I, I'm completely confused. But Whatever we happens. will try to make sense of it all again next week when we revisit this new high-tech Cold War. <laughs> I can't wait. Join us next week on Too Long Didn't Watch.